In this video, we'll discuss a few chemical properties of some metals and nonmetals. What happens if you take a piece of magnesium and begin heating it? Well, it starts burning with a dazzling white flame. And then it leaves a residue of some kind of whitish powder. Well, what exactly happened there? Some kind of chemical reaction, right? Okay, let's look at another video. What if you heated copper? Would it catch fire? Well, no. But copper does react as well, and copper forms some kind of blackish, brownish substance when you heat it. What's happening here? Let's explore these things. Okay, let's begin with asking what exactly is happening. Metals are reacting with oxygen in those two videos. So let's take the example of copper. Copper reacted with oxygen to give copper oxide, here what we call as cupric oxide. Magnesium reacted with oxygen to give magnesium oxide. Let me just balance that equation. Yes. Let me give you another example. Sodium. This is a picture of sodium which is placed inside kerosene. It's placed inside kerosene because sodium is so reactive with oxygen that if you even place it out in the atmosphere, sodium will react with oxygen and will give sodium oxide. Let me balance this one as well. Okay, so if you look at all these three reactions here, you'll notice that the right-hand side contains some kind of metallic oxide, right? So can we generalize and say metals react with oxygen to give metallic oxides? Great. Now the question is, does this happen with every single metal on, pla on the planet? Well, no. Metals like gold, silver, platinum, right, the expensive stuff, those are non-reactive. They do not react with oxygen to give a metallic oxide. But most other metals that you see around you will react with oxygen to give some kind of metallic oxide. Okay, let me ask you another question. Let's make room for a little more writing. What if I got these metallic oxides to react with water? What would happen? Let's begin with sodium. So if I got sodium oxide to react with water, what I would get is sodium hydroxide. And this guy is a base. Let me first just balance this equation. Yep. And this guy is a base. What would happen when magnesium and water react? Again, we would get magnesium hydroxide. Right? And this is also a base. What would happen when we get cupric oxide to react with water? Do we get some kind of hydroxide? No. What happens in this scenario is copper oxide just doesn't react with water. Why? Copper is not too reactive and so copper oxide is also not too reactive. If you looked at these three examples, you would have noticed that sodium is the most reactive. After that comes magnesium and after that comes copper. Well, there are a lot of other metals as well, but when we look at these three examples, and you would have guessed that gold and silver and all that stuff is even less reactive than copper, right? So it's not that all metal oxides, when they meet water, will give you some kind of hydroxide, some kind of base, but it happens with most of the metallic oxides, okay? So we can just, as a general thing, write down that metal plus oxygen gives metallic oxide and metallic oxide plus water gives us a base. Now I want to remind you about something you already know. A base turns red litmus blue, right? Great. Okay, next let's discuss the reaction of nonmetals. Now, what would happen if we got some nonmetal like carbon and got it to react with oxygen? I'd like you to pause for a moment and try to guess this. Well, we would get carbon dioxide, right? Okay, what if we took something like sulfur and got it to react with oxygen? we would get sulfur dioxide, right? Now, the interesting thing about sulfur is that this sulfur dioxide can further react with oxygen to give sulfur trioxide. So with sulfur, you have two different types of oxides. You have sulfur dioxide as well as sulfur trioxide. Well, if you're wondering why it's possible to have two different types of sulfur oxides, that's because sulfur can show two different types of valencies. Okay, before we move on, I'll just balance this last equation so that it's perfect. Okay, now as we proceed, let me ask you this question. What would happen if we added water to these non-metallic oxides? Like for example, with CO2, what if I added water? What happens? 
Well, we get an acid and this acid is called carbonic acid. Okay, what if I did the same thing with SO3? I would get another acid. This one is called sulfuric acid. I'm sure you've heard about this, H2SO4. Okay, and what the key thing that I want to point out is that we're getting an acid when we add water to or get water to react with a non-metallic oxide. Okay, let's summarize. Remember how with metals we had metals reacting with oxygen to give metallic oxides and then metallic, metallic oxides reacting with water to give bases. What about non-metals? Non-metals react with oxygen to give non-metallic oxides and when you get them to react with water, you get acids. Now, I'm sure you know this already. Acids have the ability to turn blue litmus into red color. Right? Okay, so that was about the reactions of metals and non-metals with oxygen and then their oxides with water. 